1987. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bob Jamison along with Norman Jordan. Welcome to our final telecast of Commodores football on ZTV. And Norman, Vanderbilt in Tennessee says it all. Anything else would be superfluous. Certainly, uh, the players are ready to play on both sides of the ball. Vanderbilt, I know these guys, when they get out here in front of 93,000, they're going to be ready to play some football. So everything's set. Let's get Coach Watson Brown's comments on this football game here today. I get excited about playing, coaching, whatever against the University of Tennessee, and it's not a hate, it's a, it's a competitive thing. Uh, got a lot of respect for them, a lot of friends up there. I grew up as a Tennessee fan, along with a Vanderbilt and an Alabama fan, and, and now I'm a total Vanderbilt person. And uh, on Saturday, we want to win the game very badly, but it, it's a thrill to me, and I think it's a thrill to our players to get to go to Knoxville and play this football team. It's one of the top 15 teams in the country, number one. It's also our number one in-state rival. And uh, you add that together and you get very excited about playing. Both these teams have explosive offenses and you got to figure that the team that plays the best defense here this afternoon is going to win the football game. Tennessee's chore on defense is going to be to stop Eric Jones. Sure, Eric is the key to Vanderbilt's offense. He's the key on the triple option. He's the key on the passing game. Tennessee, on the other hand, brings in something Vandy hasn't seen a whole lot of, and that's tremendous team defensive speed. Everybody on that defense runs very, very well. We'll see how it goes here today. It's at Neyland Stadium, Vanderbilt, and Tennessee, and we'll have the opening kickoff right after this. Well, as you can see, Vanderbilt has won the toss. They have elected to receive. They get the football first, and I would imagine that's the way they'd like to have things go here this afternoon. Uh, Vandy wants to take the ball. They want to get a good sustained drive right off the bat and establish the offense. And as we said all year, the, the primary thing they want to do is keep the defense off the field as much as possible. You see the series record, Tennessee, with a rather commanding lead in the series record. Vandy last victory, 1982, a game that Commodores and Commodore fans recall rather well. Watson Brown on the side and his seniors getting set for their final game at Vanderbilt. Tennessee's 20 seniors were introduced and they have one more game left. They'll be in the Peach Bowl at Atlanta against Indiana. But Vandy's going to get the football to start the game. Mark Johnson will be back deep along with Jeff Mays. Well, I'll tell you what, Norman, first time I've ever been in this stadium with the football game about to go on. It's a it's quite an exciting place to be. And you, you hope that the fans here of from Vanderbilt's side of the field over there leave happy. There's a lot of people in orange that wouldn't if that were the case. You think it's something from up here. You ought to be down on that field right now. That's when it gets to be something. <laughs> Kick is going to go out of the end zone. Danny will start from their own 20. The Vanderbilt offense, offense, front line, Kasanovich, Smith, Johnson, Holt, Pearson, and Fleming. And the backs and receivers, Mitchell, Jones, McCarroll, Crawford, and Parker. Danny coming in with a three-game winning streak, having defeated Rutgers, Kentucky, and Maryland. And let's see how this one goes. Everett Crawford in motion. Gets three yards. Had only McCarroll behind Jones. Put Crawford in motion and the handoff went to Everett. And about a three-yard pickup. So second down and seven. Something a little bit different. It's a look we haven't seen all year, and you better believe Watson Brown's going to pull out all the stops. He's got nothing to hold back, and he's going to run anything he thinks might possibly work. Jones, a draw play to Crawford. This gets about four yards to the 27-yard line, and it'll bring up third down and three. And this is where, if you're the defense playing against Vanderbilt, it's a guessing game because Vandy can do anything third and three. Tennessee defensive line, McDaniel. Kelly, Kramer, Nelson, 
Miller and Peppers actually the defensive backs. And there's the line. The long hobby hunt, Kavanick and Siegler. Siegler starting, although he wasn't thought that he would. Pitch out to Rodney Barrett, first down. More, a lot more. Finally brought down at the Tennessee 39-yard line. That is his longest run from scrimmage, and wow. Right here, you'll see Tennessee's going to take the quarterback. That's what the same thing Maryland did last week. Eric gets the pitch off to Rodney. A great cutback right there. Comes back. He's got blockers down here. Tries to cut back. Loses his footing right there. And big game down to the 40-yard line. First and 10, Vanderbilt at the Tennessee 40. Hand off to Everett Crawford, and he gets about four yards and a first down carry. Richard Cooper on the tackle. I'm sure what Watson wants to do with this play is show Tennessee something they haven't seen before, run it at them enough to where they'll have to look at it at halftime, make some adjustments, and he might just throw it out of the entire playbook at halftime. Second down, the handoff to McCarroll, and he's going to get about three or four yards. They're going to mark it at the 33, and third down and three for a second time for Vanderbilt. Seven yard run for Rodney Barrett and a four yard pick up there for McCarroll. I guess closer to three. Third and three. Vanderbilt needs to get it just short of the 40. That's where the first down mark, or 30 rather, the first down marker is there. They're going to be very close with Everett oh, Crawford. Got very it easily. Close. Got it. They got it by four. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong yard line, wasn't I? That's close, though. When you look yeah. at the big picture, that's very close. Here's the misdirection that we've seen so many times. It's all or nothing, and here's the all. I'm going to pick up about seven yards off this. Lead block. Everett's just going to go up in there, follow his blockers, and pick up about seven. Great offensive line surge that time for Vanderbilt. First down at the Tennessee 26-yard line. Jones keeps the football. And the upending going around end. A gain of two for Eric. And that was a good defensive play by Victor Pepper. Norman, you talked about Tennessee's speed, and I think in Peppers we're going to see a little bit of it here. Peppers, McDaniel, everybody out there on the field has great speed. Eric comes out. He's got no pitch, man, so he's on his own. He looks for him. Nobody there. And Peppers comes up and makes a nice open field tackle. Ball just inside the Tennessee 24, second down and eight for the Commodores. Haven't seen that in a while. The shuffle passed Everett Crawford. First down to the 13-yard line. Keith DeLong finally upended Crawford. Use that aggressive speed against them. That's what Watson's doing on that play right there. What he's doing is he knows Tennessee's quick. He knows they can get some heat back there. Let them have it. Open it up in the middle. Everett sits there, buys time, sees his opening. And right there is perfect pitch from Merrick, and he's off to the races. The 13. Jones, play action, chase, sack, back at the 22 by Keith DeLong. About a nine yard loss. So it will bring up a second and very long for Vanderbilt. Big defensive play right here. DeLong just comes through clean, missed block from someone, and he's in on Jones before Jones can do anything with it. Nothing Eric can do right there except eat the football. Don't lose it. Second down and about 18. Give to Crawford. Out of bounds at the 10. A good pickup. Crawford run out by Mike Kelly. And a great job of blocking by Daryl Holt right here. It's his last game, and he really got out there. He took out not one, but two. Once again, you'll see the Statue of Liberty is all that is. Now watch Daryl. He's got 44. There's another one. Screens him off. Just a super block. So it is third and about six for Vanderbilt. They are at the Tennessee 10-yard line. 
Crawford's got some room. He has a first down at the one and a half yard line. Boy, that play developed beautifully. Watson is holding nothing back because this, this is another play we haven't seen at all this year. And what you're going to bring Everett in motion back into the quarterback, and he's going to turn and go back out, quick pitch out, and he's just out there. He's got to make a couple of moves and get the first down. He knows where the sticks are and gets it with plenty to spare. Every second. Five minutes down and still 55 minutes to play. That's a lot. Thomas Wood. Terrence Cleveland, two of the deep backs for Tennessee, along with Jeff Davis. This is Cleveland coming right up the middle and out to the 29-yard line. He was about a step away from going another 29 or so. Scott Brown, a freshman, making the tackle. So that's where Tennessee starts from offense. Knows the football right at their own 29. Tennessee offensive line. Middlebrook's the tight end. They expect to use him a lot today. Howard Brune, Kirk Galbraith, and Simons across the front. Thomas Woods from Gallatin. Jeff Francis, Reggie Cobb, Charles Wilson, and Terrence Cleveland. This is Cobb. A gain of two or three, just across the 30. 134 meets another, Gaines and Cobb, who I imagine will have contact on a few occasions this afternoon. I think we'll probably be calling that one several times before the day's out. Gain of two on the play. Second down and eight for Tennessee. Francis. Pitch back to Cobb. He gets to the 33. David Worm, Eddie. Tennessee with some real depth in their backfield with Cobb and Keith Davis from Overton. And then you look at it, the receivers, it's the same thing there. A lot of depth, a lot of speed all over the place. You have Howard or Wilson who've been alternating at fullback. Howard is the man in there right now. Third down to about six for the Volunteers. Francis will pass. Almost intercepted by Price over on the far side. It is incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down. That would have been a great interception by Price as he dove back for the football. Carl Parker back deep for Vanderbilt, and Bob Garment punts for Tennessee. Parker is standing on his 25. Good high kick. Parker comes up at the 32. Splits a couple of people, but doesn't go much further than that. But Vandy starts at the 35-yard line, a 35-yard punt and a three-yard return. And we have an injured Tennessee player. Houston Looks Thomas like, yeah. down. Looking at that left knee, it looks like. So the Vanderbilt offense coming back out. Let's look at how he got hurt right here. See Carl make the catch, break up in there. Here he comes. And he got his ankle just twisted under his whole body right there. Yeah, you could see his knee kind of going with it. Tried to make that cut. And that's the kind of injury you're going to get on a, an artificial surface. That's right. That's exactly what happens is the grip is so good with these turf shoes that that shoe will just lock in right there and the knee can bend all over the place and the shoe's not going anywhere. And the knee is not quite made to do that. A lot of coaches have a lot of beefs about artificial turf as you take a look at Johnny Majors. His volunteers have had a good season. A couple of disappointing losses for them. It's it's a good team. You know that obviously by looking at the record in a couple of games they didn't show up quite as well as they had for some other games but it's still an outstanding a very talented team. They have been top 20 all season long and 
will be, as we mentioned earlier, playing Indiana in the Peach Bowl. Last time Tennessee was going to the Peach Bowl playing Vanderbilt was 1982. Seems like Vanderbilt was going somewhere that year, too. Yeah, they were going south to Birmingham, as I recall. Bandy comes out on offense at the 35, leading 7 to nothing. 8.36 left in the first quarter. Jones gets around outside and gets about 10 yards. He's going to be just short of the first down. Keith DeLong brings him down, but not until Jones got nine and a half of a needed 10 for a first down. Tennessee trying to get pressure here with number 90, Marion Hobby, coming down from the end, but he just doesn't have the speed to stay up with Jones, and Jones gets out for the nine and a half yard gain. You can see that they had the pitch man covered that time. They're going to do a lot of what Maryland did last week because you could just see that it kept Bandy out of sync somewhat. Andy Iascender gets a first down. Picks up about two and a half yards, tackled by the middle guard Mike Whitehead. I've got used to. So Vandy's at the 47, their own 47, first and 10, leading seven to nothing. Second back is Crawford, and a gain of three for Everett. He goes to the 50 and is pushed back. Crawford had a fine day last week against Maryland. 25 carries, over 100 yards. He's had a fine career. Vastly talented athlete and just has a lot of heart. Fans have enjoyed watching him play the last four years. Jones doesn't have to pitch. DeLong runs him out of bounds. Got a good game for Eric across the 45 inside the Tennessee 45. It'll bring up second and a little bit less than two. Okay, what Tennessee's doing right here is they're coming out there taking the pitch man immediately, get him out of the picture and use the team's speed to get out on Jones. Up to this point, though, Jones has had the better of the speed and he's getting the gainers. It's third down and two for Vanderbilt. 7.05 showing in the first quarter clock. Sneak, Jones... Goes right over a block by John Fouts. Ziegler and DeLong bring him down, but it's a first down for the Commodore. DeLong has been in on six tackles already. First and ten Vanderbilt there at the Tennessee 42-yard line. Senda looked like he was just about ready to get ahead of steam up and then he got popped after a two yard pickup and he saw something back to his left tried to break over there and I mean just got level ran into Mark of second down and eight for the Commodore with the touchdown on its opening drive. Draw play, Crawford, nice cut by Everett Crawford. And right at first down yardage. That was a great, great cut to his right. That is running right there. Take a look at this now. Look at what he sees here. He's got people over to his left, break it back right. Break it on out. Little move there. And get right at the first down. That is some kind of running right there. He's just about half a yard short. The nose of the football near the 32. It needs to cross the 32, so third and one. They'll try it just like they did before and have the same result. Eric Jones keeps first down. move the markers but there's the injured knee of Houston the Thomas it is the ankle yeah that's what they got all wrapped up it just got bent the way an ankle is not supposed to bend 20 plays offensively for Vanderbilt Everett Crawford 
Not much there that time, only a couple of yards. Keith DeLong unofficially been on eight tackles already, and we have not quite played ten minutes. In fact, right now we have five minutes left in the first quarter. Vanderbilt ahead. Crawford gained about three on that last play. Second down, play action pass. Parker's wow. wide open. Touchdown. Holy cow. Right here it is. Carl Parker breaks in the open, and I mean he's wide open all the way. All he does is just run straight down the field, and nobody covers him. They had twins out here, and he just split the two defenders, and it's wide open. All he had to do is fair catch it. Great play action fake. That's what got this. You see the fake right there. Drew the linebackers, drew the defensive backs, and then just blowed it out. So it's 13 to nothing. Closest Tennessee defender was about 10 yards from Parker. Clark. Got the extra point. And so we have four minutes and 39 seconds left in the first quarter. And in Knoxville, Vanderbilt leads Tennessee 14 to nothing. Minutes and seconds have gone in this football game. Well, he'd love to just take the ball and go home right now. <laughs> but he's been, he's been in this situation before. He knows you've got to keep the team up constantly. That was Jones' 10th touchdown pass to Carl Parker, and Parker's 11th touchdown reception on the year. One of the, the other one came in the Ole Miss game from Gromos. A high kick comes to Cleveland at the nine-yard line. Cleveland up the middle. Just about got through, and then he gets horse-collared at the 26, and a good job by the Vanderbilt pickoff coverage team. Brent Turner there on nice stop. Market at the 27. That's where Tennessee will start. Right here, back deep. And what Tennessee's doing is a lot of cross blocking with the up backs. They're coming up there trying to knock the people out sideways, open that gap, and right there, Turner just gets in and closes the gap just in time. What off a block to get there. Wilson, the fullback, and a good gain on a first down carry out to the 35. So an eight yard pickup. Tennessee will be looking at second and two. Chris Gaines the tackle. Andy scoring drive. 357, 65 yards, 10 plays. And the 28-yard pass, Jones to Parker. Second and two for the Volunteers from their own 35. Francis to pass. Intercepted! To the five. What a job. He just stepped right in there. Billy Cunningham. Billy Cunningham saw that all the way. He read the check off. He could hurt, he could hear the audible from Francis. And he knew what was coming. Just some speed on Tennessee's part kept him from going into the end zone. So Vanderbilt has it first and goal just outside the Tennessee five-yard line. They've got to get a playoff. Jones just now getting in the huddle, and there's only eight seconds left on the clock. Five seconds. And timeout. And he does the wise thing. So we'll take a break. Three minutes, 51 seconds left in the first period. Vanderbilt with the football leading Tennessee. You're going to see Cunningham. He's just going to race out of there. He was lined up as the outside linebacker. He knows where that ball is going. He knows everything. He's heard Francis check off and breaks right in front of it, takes it, and almost breaks it into the end zone. Francis and Woods combined on that tackle. Can't feel bad about Woods catching it from behind, but Francis getting even on an angle makes you feel bad. at the five. Jones has the football and gets about a yard and a half. Tennessee shut it down as Vanderbilt ran to the short side of the field that time. That's the first time, by the way, this year that Vanderbilt has had to take a timeout 
to avoid a penalty, a five-yard delay penalty. And you've got to feel like that wasn't Eric's fault. It, no, he the didn't. turnover was so rapid, and the coaches were over there. They're thinking defense, and then all of a sudden you've got the ball on the five-yard line. He didn't get into the huddle until there was 10 seconds to go. Ball just across the four, second down and goal for Vanderbilt. Jones again. Boy, he is right at the goal line, about half a foot short. Kelly Ziegler kept him from getting a touchdown out of that. Didn't look like there was going to be much at all for Eric. Right here, take a look at it. Fake to the Andy McCarroll. Follow back up in there. See the opening. Break it in. And Ziegler gets him from the side just short of the goal line. 2.35 left in the first quarter. Vanderbilt half a foot away from the Tennessee goal line. Jones, he's in the end zone. Vanderbilt leads 20 to nothing. They had the middle opened up, Eric. Or Norman and Eric saw it. Went right behind Daryl Holt. What they've been doing is sweeping out behind the guard and the center. And this time they opened the whole thing up in the middle. Eric saw it, took the snap, barely got the snap. Watch. You see him just fumble the snap a little bit and then just fall up in there. Tennessee relying upon the linebackers to come up and do the job. So Vanderbilt with Johnny Clark out. He has had a busy first quarter. He will try his third extra point. Block. And that's no good. So it's 20 to nothing in favor of Vanderbilt. First psychological thing that goes Tennessee's way is really only so-so because they trail 20 to nothing. That's right. If you're if you're Vandy, you know you can't let that get to you because after all, you got a 20-point lead. One block, extra point. Everybody makes a lot of that, and it could turn out to be a big thing. But you're up 20 to nothing at this point. Right here's the touchdown again. Eric fumbles the snap as he comes out, but there's nobody over Daryl Holt right there, and the two linebackers converge up and try to stop it. Daryl gets enough surge to let Eric fall right in behind him. Clark will kick off Cleveland back deep for Tennessee. After the Billy Cunningham interception, five yards, three plays, and it took a minute and 26 seconds. Jones on the carry. His second touchdown of the football game. The other one on a pass to Parker. Cleveland takes this one at the nine. Breaks back up the middle and gets out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Art Lilly made the tackle. Jeff Francis coming out to a chorus of boos right here. Crowd being a little bit hard on the young man. I can't make any name I was out of looking Francis. To see what, it makes it sound like boo. You know? I, I forgot we were not in Nashville, and I was wondering what Mitchell was doing at the time. Wilson on the carry. Gets about a yard and a half. And I can't make anything out of Charles Wilson. It sounds like a boo either. <laughs> this, this crowd's being awfully hard. A lot of football to be played, but certainly for the majority of the people here, uh, it hasn't gone well for the first 13 minutes. Francis will pass, bombs it away to Anthony Miller. Dropped it at the 15. Roman was with him, but Miller had him by about a step. And it was just, if it had been to the inside, I think he'd have caught it. It was just over the outside, and by the time he turned around, it went off his fingertips and incomplete third down. Miller shows the great speed of a wide receiver because back here, Roman is step for step with him, and then all of a sudden he's got that extra gear to kick by, and you see it come over his right shoulder. It would have been a tremendous catch, but couldn't come up with it. Miller has been injured and out most of the season. Third down and eight, Francis straight drop back. Complete over on the side to Alvin Hart. Tennessee gets its first first down of the football game. Football out 
to the Tennessee 46. First and 10 now. Tennessee converting on a third and nine. Delay. And not much for Reggie Cobb. Slides down the line of scrimmage and gets a yard out of the play. And you could see Cobb was ready to bounce that play outside, except 34 had a hold of him, Chris Gaines. And that man, when he gets a hold of you, he can hold you. Gaines and Snyder kept Cobb from getting any more than a yard on the play. Pass on the near side is complete, and they hit Harper. That will be a first down by a couple of yards inside Vanderbilt territory. Now the deep pass to Miller really set up that play right there because what you had is you had Roman really running for his life to play a couple of plays before and right here he's got to break back up on the out route and they set it up very well. And that lets Cobb through and he is inside the 30 to the 27 or 8 yard line. Alan Roman coming up to make the tackle. Fifty seconds left in the first quarter. They mark it at the Vanderbilt 28. So Tennessee moving for the first time in offense. The Volunteers third possession. Trailing 20 to nothing. Howard. Nobody can knock him down. He is to the 13 yard line. He finally just tripped. But nobody tackled him. He had a great year last year in Nashville if you'll recall. Tremendous run right here. Watch the leg strength. Watch the power. Miss one, second miss, roll off, spin off another man, and almost kept his feet. Just a tremendous run. Tripped over Phil Stewart, one of his offensive linemen, a tackle. Who was downfield making a block. First and 10, Tennessee at the Vanderbilt 13. Pitch to Cobb. Say about Reggie Cobb, he smells that goal line when the ball gets inside the 20, and he took a big chunk that way as the first quarter is going to come to a close on that play. So we have played 15 minutes. One quarter has come and gone. The annual Vanderbilt Tennessee football game this year from Knoxville. Tennessee knocking on the door, but right now Vandy leads 20 to nothing. Here's our at the Commodore six. It's second down and three from there. Tennessee starting a drive back at their own 32. Francis pitches to Cobb. Makes a good cut. Close to first down yardage at the three. It'll either be third and very short or first and goal for the Volunteers. Right at the first down markers. Looks like it's going to be just a little short. You take a look at it. Toss sweep. Get out. Everybody's coming out. Just opening out the field. And Cobb sees the Hole right there breaks through, almost breaks it in the end zone. Third and less than a yard for Tennessee. They're going to pitch to Cobb coming this way. He is not going to make it as Devon Winston brings him down. A loss in the play, back to about the seven. Oh, nine yard line. And they're going to kick it. They're going to try for three. Big, big play by DeMond Winston. Watch him fight through right here. Fighting out comes through both a, a tackle and a running back block right there and just gets a hold of the jersey and drags him down. Phil Rich will attempt the extra point out of the hold of Lee England. 20, or field goal rather, not extra point. 26 yard attempt. England gets it down. Rich has the field goal. And Tennessee gets on the board. 13-43 left in the first half. Andy's lead is 17 at 20 to 3. As you think about, but uh, one of them is that Mandy made a big play on third and short for Tennessee into fourth and long, and they had to go with a three-point try rather than for six. Big defensive play right there, just huge with Tennessee that close to the goal line. Dirk Borgognoni kicks off for Tennessee. Mays and Johnson back deep for the Commodores. Borgognoni, who sent one into the end zone, sends this one back. 
Vanderbilt covers it there, and they'll take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Not not a very pretty sight right there, but uh, just as effective as catching it and downing it on one knee. Well, they made sure Jeff May is falling <laughs> on top of Mark Johnson. Take a look at this. You talk about your Chinese fire drill. Oops, yeah, I got oops. it. No, no, nope, no, you nope. get it. Okay, we'll both it get okay, it. Okay, you get it, and I'll be on you. Yeah, there I'll, we I'll go. Stay here. Now let's try it the best of three. <laughs> so Vandy, first and ten from their own 20. Andy McCarroll back in at fullback this time. Give us to McCarroll. Tries the left side. Parker <laughs> made a great block on one of the officials. Just as the play was closing, a gain of two. Tennessee kept the ball 337 and gets three points out of it on the 26-yard field goal by Phil Rich. Fans didn't like that, but really, you looked at looking what third, fourth, and six, and you're just a minute into the second quarter now. You, they were really, a minute into the fourth quarter. You're, you're say, gambling the game right there if you don't go ahead and kick that. That's right. Jones pitched to Crawford, gets a little bit outside, but not too far, and Keith DeLong, who has been a handful and in on a lot, makes the stop, and it'll bring up third and six. Watch right here. DeLong's going to come down. Eric gets a pitch out to Everett, and then it's a foot race. DeLong gets just the right angle, grabs him by the foot, and prevents, oh, another seven or eight yard gain right there. Third and six for the Commodore. No back offense. Three receivers to the top, two to the bottom part of the screen. Quarterback draw, first down, Jones. Still going. He is to the 47-yard line. Brian Kimbrough from Dixon finally got him, but a big gain on third and six. You could see Jones look over to the sideline. He's in trips formation. Tennessee spread out all over the place. They signal in, run the quarterback draw. Two steps, and bam, straight up the field. That little crow hop he gave as he got back to plant is what you usually do just before you set up to throw, and Looked I like think that really made That's it effective. That's exactly right. First down, Vanderbilt at their own 48-yard line. That's where the ball was spotted after the big game by Jones. Andy McCarroll gets into Tennessee territory. Pickup of about four. Keith DeLong will have to apply for some new shoulder pads for the Peach Bowl. At the rate he is getting in on the Tennessee defense, he is in on that tackle again. DeLong's only about 212 pounds, so he can really move in there. He's really small for an inside type linebacker, but he can get up and down that line of scrimmage. McCarroll picked up five. It is second and five. Pass to Crawford. Side steps one, steps over another. He is to the 25 yard line. What a run after the catch and a perfectly threaded pass from Jones to Crawford. You talk about crazy legs. Watch this one right here. Eric's going to see that he's got Everett very quick on a pass, fake to McCarroll, hold the linebackers, then get it out to him. Now watch this. Boom. Wow. Slide off and almost slide off that one. Just a tremendous run. McCarroll on a first down carry gets inside the Tennessee 20. A gain of six. Just think Vanderbilt has McCarroll back next year and I ascend at the fullbacks. Jones at the quarterback. Rodney Barrett. They are losing Carl Parker and Everett Crawford. Two uh, major losses. I Two major say. losses. Crawford. Right at first down yardage. He will be about half a yard short. He is at the 16 yard line. Third down and a yard for the Commodore. Well, let's see how Tennessee defends this. Vanderbilt in this short situation has gone with Jones, either straight up or to the right side. On the previous times that they've had third and short. And it's stop us if you can, and they did not. It's a first down for Vanderbilt. He is inside the 15 to the 14, first down Vanderbilt. 
You're exactly right, Bob. It's stop us if you can. They're just going to line up and run it until they prove to them. Watch right here. Holt coming out on DeLong. Eric just slipping through right there and getting the first down. It's McCarroll. He is down to the 10 yard line. A gain of four. Second down and six coming up. Nine minutes, 20 seconds, as you see in the first half. Bandy leading 20 to three over Tennessee. Jones keeps, squirts around outside. Oh, my, he's in the end zone. His third touchdown of the afternoon. Vandy leads 26 to 3. Well, there are 93,306 fans. We here. talked about it before. Tennessee's trying to stop the speed. They're just saying, well, we can stop Eric Jones. Eric right there, great fake to get, get him off of him and just breaks away with speed into the end zone. 93,306, and about 8,000 Vanderbilt fans here, at least that many, because that's how many tickets were sold. And they are enjoying things to this point immensely. Vanderbilt will try for two. Kasanovich, two, 28 to three in favor of Vanderbilt. Play action, Kasanovich wide open in the back of the end zone as the tight end hauls it in. Take a look at, look at it. Kasanovich is going to block down, give the illusion of staying in for the block, and then just break out. His men leaves him. He's wide open in the end zone. Perfect pass, and there's the two-point conversion. Nice of him to come right at the end zone camera there, wasn't it? Got all fouled up in the backfield. Not much of a fake there, but enough for Kasanovich to lose his man. You know what? I think it almost it might have been the long run help because it looked like Tennessee thought, okay, there's some confusion. Let's go get him, and that opened it up. They're running the quadruple reverse right here, the way the backfield looked. Still 9.03 left in the first half. Well, I have not been in Nashville a number of years, a lot of people, but in the last 10, I can't recall a better performance through a quarter and six minutes from a Vanderbilt football team, but especially against a team as good as Tennessee. They're going to have to do it for four full quarters. That's exactly right. The thing is, Watson Brown knows that. He knows he's got to keep the pressure on these guys. Squib kick still bouncing around. Cleveland takes it out at the 14. Oh, he fell down or he was gone. Got out to the 34 yard line. He slipped making a cut or he was up the middle and about 86 yards into the end zone. Randy, 80 yards, 440. Remember, they've had 340 something, five minutes, 440, and then a, a short minute and a half drive on the five yard touchdown after the interception from Cunningham. So some good ball possession by Vanderbilt unofficially 245 yards for the Commodores in total offense. Tennessee first down there at the 34. Pitch back to Keith Davis. Understand and I know a lot of Nashville people even those who aren't Tennessee fans glad to hear this but Keith Davis appears to have overcome some very serious knee injuries and has been running the football very well lately. A career threatening knee injury as you take a look at it right here. It's going to break up in there. You see the old speed he had. You can see he's got the moves again. He, he can make that burst when he needs it. Three yard gain for Davis, second and seven. Francis has Woods. First down at the Vandy 49. Alan Roman runs him out of bounds. Thomas Woods, the Woods family from Gallatin here, and they uh, have orange on except for one part of the family. <laughs> Carl Woods, of course, was a tailback at Vanderbilt and quite a running back for Vanderbilt, and Thomas is his brother out playing wide receiver for the Vols. Carl's got a black and white striped T-shirt on. Nothing orange on him today. Davis, good cut. Still going, and he's 
to the Vanderbilt 35 yard line. Andy Baker comes up to make the tackle but a 14 yard gain for Keith Davis. And we've got a Vandy player down as we take a look at this. Davis takes the handoff, breaks it out, breaks back inside, sees the daylight, breaks through, and just gets brought down. Excellent run by Davis. Chip Price is the injured Vanderbilt Commodore. I saw what happened there. Miller came out to block on him and, for lack of better words, leg whipped on the block as he went down on him. Looks like it's just one of those things where it just hurts for a little while and hurts like the Dickens tomorrow morning. So Price coming out. Tennessee first down at the Vanderbilt 35 yard line. 8-11 left in the first half. Vanderbilt ahead 28-3. Really what the defense has got to do, Norman, is to prevent Tennessee from doing some scoring, and particularly that quick scoring, where they have two- and three-minute drives for touchdown. So there's still too much time in the football game to start thinking about going into the football version of the stall, which is not in Vanderbilt's playbook. Pass to Cleveland and a saving tackle by Elliott, or he was going to go a lot further. Gained about eight yards. Tennessee Cleveland. caught Vanderbilt in a blitz. You see Gaines coming right up the middle, and they ran the perfect play for that because that takes all your inside pursuit away, and Elliott just gets out there, stays away from the blocks, and makes a what appeared to be a touchdown-saving tackle. Got nine on the play, second and one. They get the first down with the fullback Wilson to the 24. Demond Winston brings him down. First down, Tennessee at the Vandy 24-yard line. Commodores leading 28 to three. Seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Wilson and Davis are the back. Davis wide open up the middle and breaks it inside the 10 to the nine-yard line. Reese on the tackle, but a Tennessee first down to the Vanderbilt nine. That's just a busted assignment because you'll see there's nobody there in the first place. Everybody's moved away, and Davis just takes it right up the gut and gets the big gainer. Tennessee at the Vandy nine. Falls looking for their first touchdown of the football game. Francis has Cleveland in the end zone. Touchdown. He slipped the tackle, and Tennessee gets their first touchdown. Slipped right through Baker, who had a chance to keep him out of the end zone at about the two. Speed on speed right here, and they're just saying that ours are faster than yours. A little out route, makes the grab, and Cleveland just slips the tackle and bounces in the end zone. Tennessee's first touchdown comes with 6.56 left. They're going to go for two. Woods in motion. Francis rolls right. Nobody's open right now. What a catch by Harper. That was a great catch. It really was. And a nice pass by Francis, too. He put that ball where it had to go. Roll out by time, by time right here. And he sees Harper in the middle of a crowd, and he says he can out jump everybody. There he goes. Watch him get up. Just a tremendous catch right there. Five Commodores right around him. Watch his snag. And, I mean, he is way up there. Well, Harper's 6'5", and that makes sense that you'd be able to do that. Maybe Don DeVoe could use him. <laughs> and he's just a freshman. So it's 28 to 11. Vanderbilt leading Tennessee, 6.56 left in the second quarter. Uh, 
Bargagnoni, the man who kicks off for Tennessee. Johnson and Mays back deep. He has kicked two into the end zone so far. This one is going to get right to, and Johnson will down it in the end zone. That's a smart play. Vanderbilt will come out on offense, leading 28-11. First half. Havanek hits Jones in the backfield and a loss to the 21. Tennessee's fans have suddenly realized that going for three was a good idea and that they're in the football game. Right here's what Tennessee's been trying to do to the triple option all day long. They're just trying to upset the rhythm, get out there, get somebody on Jones. It doesn't have to be the normal way, the conventional way to play the option. They're just trying to get somebody to break through there, get to him before he can use his speed. And Tennessee takes a defensive timeout. That's a little strange, don't you think? Well, the only thing I can think of as you look at Eric Jones going to the sideline is that Tennessee has possibly found a tendency on Vanderbilt that they use on these third and nine, third and eight type plays, and they want to get it over there and discuss it because that's the one thing Vandy has had to do and tried to do all year is keep from this situation. So Tennessee's going to try to keep the pressure on. And you can feel the old Mo going Tennessee's way if they hold Vanderbilt. And then, of course, some pressure going over to the Vanderbilt defense if they're not successful on this third down play. Vandy in their seventh third down opportunity. Third and nine will be their longest. They have completed on their six, have been successful in converting six of their previous six third downs. why they're ahead with 28 points. Third and nine. Play action. Jones slammed at the 24-yard line by Jeremy Lincoln. That looked like that was going to go a little bit better than that as it developed, and then it didn't. There's a great team defensive speed that Tennessee has. You watch them. They're going to get out here and get on Jones. They've already taken the pitch man away. You can see it right there, and then poof, converge, and really lay the big lick on Eric. First punt of the afternoon from Johnny Clark. Gets a good punt away. Thomas Woods at the 36-yard line. Good cutback, gets to the 46, and Tennessee starts in good field position. 41-yard punt. About a 10-yard return for Thomas Wood. Tennessee's last two possessions, they've moved the football well and picked up 11 points out of those two. And Tennessee on that punt right there really tried to put the pressure on Vanderbilt. They know they've got kind of an inexperienced kicking game, and they really went after it. The Clark got off a good one. Play action from Francis. Fumbles. Who's got it? It looks like Tennessee recovered the football. And if it is, it is going to go that way. It's an eight-yard pickup on a fumble. Scandal looked like he might have caused the fumble. And a break for... Tennessee. John Bruin right there really on the spot because he didn't have much of a shot at it. Let's take a look at it. Francis roll out. Fake. He's going to come out here. He sees everybody's covered. Pulls the ball down. Scanlon just gets a piece and there across the top. Devon Winston and Bruin just really did a good job recovering that ball. Third and two, or second and two rather. First down with William Howard. Derek Snyder on the tackle. There at the, the Vanderbilt 42 yard line, first and 10. Goes deep for Harper. Just off his fingertips. And 
and then he runs pretty hard into that fence, gets up all right. Didn't look like he was going to be open, and then all of a sudden, zip, there he goes. He's got the speed, and I'll tell you, he showed a lot of courage right here. He knows that fence is there. He plays here all the time. And poof. Fortunately, didn't catch the crossbar. Arnold Elliott was in pretty good position to put a hit on Harper had he made connections with the pass. Second down and 10. First down to the 31. Renford Reese tripped him. Well, they play action a couple of times, and then they finally just go ahead and give it on the delay to the tailback. Watch it open up. It's coming right at you. Cobb's going to get it. You'll see that burst of speed he's got to get through there before everybody can converge and holds onto the ball after taking a tough lick. 3.30 left in the half. Tennessee first and 10 at the Vandy 31. Francis saw something he liked that time, and that was that he had a receiver out there one-on-one, -on -one, and also he had a good matchup with his lineman right in front of him to his right. So he checked it off, ran it to his right, and made the big pickup about eight or nine yards. Second and two for the Volunteers. They're at the Vandy 23 now. First down with William Howard just across the 20. on the tackle. Vanderbilt defense needs to at least hold them to a field goal try here, I think. I don't at least two, you know, they'd like to at least do that. Let's put that way. They would like to do just about anything but let Tennessee score a touchdown right here. Tennessee at the one with 218 left in the half. Well, they're just opening it up big time right now. Take a look at it. You'll see it's just man on man blocking up front. And Cobb goes through. Everybody frozen, makes a good move. He freezes the linebackers and gets the game down to the one yard line. Big play was the fumble by Francis and the recovery by Bruin. is in the end zone. And let's see if Tennessee goes for one or two this time around. They're one sending in one. Rich. Which would make it a 10-point game. A minute 58 left in the half. 28 to... 17 with Tennessee trying to make it 28 to 18. And Rich's extra point is good. So Tennessee are running up some points after trailing 28 to 3. They've come back with two touchdowns and one two point conversion to cut the Vanderbilt lead to 10. And with that touchdown, Cobb also, he tied Herschel Walker for the career, well, the season freshman scoring record. And that's a pretty good man to be tying right there. 17 touchdowns on the year. A lot of people in the SEC who've seen Cobb before today say he's going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next few years. Take a look at it again right here. Cobb just up, turn the shoulders, get away from the linebacker, and in the end zone. Vanderbilt. Minute 58 left in the half. Seems like more than a half. It has been. <laughs> Jeff May, uh, this is Mark Johnson. And he'll down. 
down it. So Cardignoni has kicked the ball into the end zone four times. Either way, he's kicked it into the closed end, into the, well, there is no open end here at Tennessee, relatively open end. Vandy has two timeouts right here and a minute 58. You've got to see what Watson's got up his sleeve. You would think he's going to try to get a couple of first downs and then maybe open it up. Tennessee's scoring drive. Volunteers, three minutes, two seconds, 54 yards on eight plays. And the fact that they recovered their own fumble was probably one of the critical plays on that drive. Definitely. Pitch to Everett Crawford. I'll tell you what, the last six minutes have seen a different Tennessee offense and defense in the first quarter and a half. Tony Nelson kept Crawford from gaining anything. No gain, second and ten. And if Vanderbilt doesn't get much this time, you might see Tennessee start to use a timeout That's right. to think about it. Because they'll want to get the ball back the way they have moved it in the last few minutes. And Vanderbilt has not had that triple option work since Eric Jones scored the last touchdown that Vandy scored. Second and ten. And around to Parker. First down. He is out of bounds just across the 30-yard line. And that'll allow the Commodores to keep the football for three more plays. Right here, take a look at it. Quick pitch. You've got to think there's something up right there. Everybody leading out, and here comes Carl the other way. Tremendous wall set up over here. A lot of good blocking, and he knows where his sticks are and breaks it through, gets the first down. Greg Smith stayed back on his side, the left side, and threw a big block really on did. one of the linebackers that helped make a big play out of it. Andy Iacinda gets across the 35 to the 36, coming down on one minute left in a tremendously exciting first half. A minute left in the half, Andy leading 28 to 18. Second down and about five. Quarterback draw, gets around one man, and gets to the 40-yard line. That looked like nothing, and Eric got four out of it. That's what speed will do for you. Vandy just letting the clock run. 20 seconds to go. Take a look at this. He's going to drop back. Linebackers have stayed at home, so he knows he's got to break it outside, and just breaks out, gets out there, makes something out of nothing, something we've seen Eric do several times, and that'll wind down the hand. Commodore, get the football and keep Tennessee from getting it back. And we have had ourselves a great 30 minutes of football at halftime. Vanderbilt leads Tennessee 28 to 18. Nine minutes of the first half. They've made it a game at 28-18, but I think Vanderbilt needs to remember they still have that lead. That's right. Vanderbilt is still ahead by 10 points. They went in, they got basically whipped the second quarter. They won the first quarter hands down and then got beat in the second quarter. But they're still up by 10 points. They've got to remember that. They've got to remember we do really have the momentum because we got the points. And Vanderbilt really scored uh, with some impressive drives in the early part of the football game. They had... Uh, a couple of 80 yards, one of about 65, and then, of course, a five-yard drive after an interception by Billy Cunningham. Let's take a look at Bandy's touchdown, the first one. We're right here, Eric Jones is going to take the ball, a play that worked for him. The whole first half is the quarterback sneak, just follow up behind Darrell Holt right there into the end zone easily. That gave Vanderbilt a 7-0 lead, and then the Commodores made it 14-0. Right here. Play action take. Carl Parker has broken into the open, and I mean nobody's even looking at him. Eric just unloads it. Carl's wide open, makes the catch, and I mean that was a big touchdown right there. Really got Vanderbilt offense on the ball. And the defense was on the ball in the next possession. Billy Cunningham intercepted a pass, went to the five, and then Vandy made it 20 to nothing. All right here, not much to this. Take another look at it. Eric up under the center, takes a snap, bobbles it a little bit. 
but still gets in before the linebacker pressure comes up and keeps him out of the end zone. That put Vanderbilt ahead 20 to nothing. Tennessee got a field goal, and the Commodores right back down the field again. Right here, Eric Jones, the last time Vanderbilt's run this option effectively. Right there it is, triple option. Eric Speed just gets him outside into the corner of the end zone. Huge, huge play, but it is the last time they ran the option effectively. Vanderbilt completed a two-point conversion, and then it's Tennessee's turn to sparkle on offense. Well, right here, Francis is just saying, okay, I've got speed out here. You've got speed in the backfield. I think mine's faster than yours. Throws it out to Cleveland. Cleveland makes the catch, slips the tackle, and slides into the end zone. Tennessee completed a two-point conversion on that play, and then they got another touchdown, and that's the one we're going to see right here with Reggie Cobb. Well, they got here on the run, so let's give it to Cobb and let him get us in the end zone on the run. Cobb goes up, turns the shoulders, gets away from Gaines, the linebacker, and spins into the end zone for the touchdown. With that touchdown, Cobb tied the SEC record for scoring, and as a freshman, Herschel Walker had the previous record, and uh, he's been a good one. Let's take a look at the stats from the first half. They should be very interesting. Well, first downs, <laughs> that's about as even as you can get. Yards rushing, surprisingly, Vanderbilt has the edge right there. Yards passing, not a whole lot of passes thrown. Total yards, 269, Vanderbilt, 198, Tennessee. Little surprise there. Big, big statistic right here. The turnovers, one for Tennessee, none for Vandy. They've got to have that. And, of course, the time of possession. The last two are the most important for Vanderbilt. 18 minutes, almost 19 minutes in the first half. And Tennessee, of course, with 11 minutes, three seconds. And uh, coming in, we knew that the defenses on both teams, uh, how they played would be very critical. And the offenses certainly had their way of, for the most part in the first half. Well, any time you have 46 points <laughs> scored in a half of football, it, it's uh, obvious that the offenses have had their way. And, and really, the defense that plays better in the second half, just as we said going into the game, will win this football game. That's right. Vanderbilt has to get back out. They have to reestablish the triple option, which they did not run well toward the end of the half. They have to get that going again because that's what the whole offense is based on. They get that going, that opens up the passing game, everything. Tennessee will get the football to start the second half. We'll see how the next 30 minutes go. The first 30 have been a lot of fun right now at halftime. And Vandy leading 28 to 18 coming in. And Tennessee is going to get the football to start the second half. Their last three possessions of the first half resulted in a field goal and two touchdowns. Commodore's coming back out and they're getting ready to go and I've got to think halftime came at a fairly decent time. I think it kind of uh, you, know, you talk about momentum interrupters. Tennessee had quite a bit at that point and now we've had a 20 minute halftime and we'll see how it goes in the second half. That's right. It's almost almost like a boxing match. You give the first round to Tennessee. I mean to Vanderbilt in the second round to Tennessee. And there you see Coach Brown taking a little time out for an interview. I know he's got more things on his mind than, than talking on the. Oh, he's talking to Chip Walters and doing a, having quite a conversation. We'd have to hear that to, to know exactly <laughs> what the conversation was. First half kept everybody on the edge of their seat and probably got more in store the second half. Johnny Clark will kick it off. One four will kick off to another. Terrence Cleveland back deep for Tennessee. He has come close to really having some long gainers on the kickoff returns, but if you've seen any Tennessee games this year, you know that is often the case. For a lot of years, that's been the case. And what Tennessee's doing is they're using a lot of cross block action. Guys coming across the field to just blindside somebody rushing down that they never see them. And that's really effective blocking right there. gets into it and we get into the second half from the nine Cleveland slides out to the 31 Jamie Gillespie special teams captain and he's been on about half of those tackles on kickoffs this year 22 yard return you can see how quick Cleveland is because I mean he got up there it didn't look like much at all and all of a sudden he's at the 31 yard line Jamie got banged up a little bit there. I'll tell you, when you're running full speed and you're meeting somebody running full speed, that can hurt. Francis at quarterback for Tennessee. Hands off to Reggie Cobb. 
And a first down carry to the 34, a gain of three. I look for Tennessee to come out this half and try to establish the running game. That's when the offense was moving the best. It's, you don't have any will the quarterback complete it type situations. Hand it off. You've got a stable full of great running backs. Let them run. Francis is going to pass. Ah, complete on the sideline to Anthony Miller. Nice concentration by Miller right there because he knew he had to get that foot in bounds, and you'll see it happen right here in front of us. You'll see pass right on time and watch him get that left foot in. Nice catch. First down Tennessee out to their 45. They've been very successful running on delay plays out of the backfield. Pitch comes back to Cobb. Spins and gets two or three yards. Chris Gaines tackles him. Opening drive of the second half. Vanderbilt leading by 10. We've played a minute of the second half. Tennessee looking at second down and eight. with some time hits Wilson at the 50 but that's all and we see Billy Cunningham stacking there so a gain of three on that play that pass play brings up third down and five Cunningham's read this all the way he sees the back come out he likes his zone coverage right here sees the ball Francis dumps it off and Cunningham gets him just as the ball hits his hands and brings him down after a three yard completion Wilson is the only setback behind Francis. Whistles. And Time Tennessee out. is taking a timeout. And Jeff Francis goes over and says, who called the timeout? It wasn't me. Johnny Majors wonders the same thing. Smoky and a future little Smoky, I guess. And someday you can grow up and wear this costume. No, no, it's a, it'd be a contradiction to grow up and wear that costume. <laughs> All mascots, you, you've got to stay a kid. That's right. That's to be true. a good mascot. That is true. Third down and five. Well, that's the first penalty of the football game, and it's going to hurt. Doug Bradley getting anxious. You wish that he had been drawn off sides if you're looking at it from Vanderbilt's point of view, but. Well, he didn't give himself a chance because he went away and acted disgusted. When you do that, just step up there and go, wait, whoa, he moved. Now you could see that there was no movement. Probably the cadence is what drew him off sides. And that is why Francis is starting today because Francis can get in there. He can do the checkoffs. Marking it off. It looks like it's going to be just short. Well, and that, that's that's a good mark because I looked down and I said five yards won't get this. It ought to be a couple inches short, and that's exactly what happened. But instead of third and five, it's third and really the nose of the football. And you can see how close it is to the Vanderbilt 45. That's where it needs to be. Wilson. Gets outside, and boy, it hadn't been for Price to make that gentry. He would have gone all the way. First down, Tennessee at the Vandy 36-yard line. This takes a lot of guts right here when you got a situation that short to bounce it outside because you've really got to believe that you can get out there because if you don't, you've just blown it. And there you see Gentry dragging down from behind. Davis hit in the backfield. Gets forward for a yard to the 35-yard line. And guess who met him there? Six tackles unofficially for Chris this afternoon. Take a look at it. Look at the penetration that Vanderbilt gets right here. Right here, the play's destroyed. 
Looked like Damon Winston getting through, Scanlon through, and then Gaines there. You better believe he's going down. Second and nine. Pitch coming to Cobb, sweep. They string it out, but Cobb goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line. And it'll bring up third and very short for the University of Tennessee. 12.05 left in the third quarter. 28-18 Vanderbilt, Tennessee getting the football to start the half and trying to cut a one-time 28-3 deficit down considerably as they are in field goal range right now. Cobb, 12 carries, 70 yards. Wilson, first down. He is to the 23. Demond Winston tackles him. Give it to the big man up the middle there and let him get that short yardage. And Tennessee's in scoring position once again at the 23. Commodore's looking for a turnover, I think, at this point. Try to swing some momentum back their way. Cobb that time, not much at all, to the 20, and it'll bring up third down. Third and seven. Chris Gaines. Tell you what, though, Cobb is one hard runner. He really ran up in there, got hit flush in the hole, and still struggled forward and picked up a couple. Third and seven for the Volunteers at the Vanderbilt 20 yard line. Pitch comes back to Davis. Ripped that one right open, and hardly anybody even laid a hand on Keith Davis. Right here, look at the blocking. That's the key to it. Look at Howard right here, going to get the block. Davis bursts the speed that it takes to get by the linebackers, and he's in the end zone. Rich to try to bring Tennessee to within three. And it is 20 to 25 in favor of Vanderbilt. Tennessee has run up 22 unanswered points on the Commodores. 10.58 left in the third period. Vanderbilt leads by three. We'll come back. The offsides on Vanderbilt that gave Tennessee third and short instead of third and about five and a half. But then right there, third and seven, and they do a sweep and just run right into the end zone right. almost untouched. Tremendous blocking on that. Vanderbilt obviously in stunt right there. They were trying to get movement out of their linebackers, get in there, penetrate, and it backfired on them, and Davis just burst into the end zone for a big touchdown. So Tennessee scored on each of its last four possessions. Borgognoni, let's see if he can get this one into the end zone. It's going to come up a little bit short. Taken up front by Jeff Mays at the 12. Mays is through. Fumble. Tennessee has it. Chris Treese recovered the fumble. He is from Murfreesboro. Take a look at it right here. Mays is going to field it cleanly. Tough fit, tough ball to handle. Breaks back up in here. Breaks through the open. And a hand just comes on the ball. You've got to lock the ball away right there. A hand tackle like that cannot bring you down. It can't knock the ball loose. Right here, the Vanderbilt defense has to come alive. Francis scrambles out of the pocket. He's going to get a big game. First down at the Vanderbilt 34. Picked up 11, scrambling. A demoralizing play for the Vanderbilt defense to cover the Tennessee receivers, only to see it turn into a ball first down. Well, this game has turned so totally around. 28-3, and now Tennessee trying to get in for a go-ahead score. 
So I'd make no illusions about it if you're Vanderbilt right now. This game has switched. You've got to come alive. Almost a fumble by Cobb, but not a fumble, and he is to the 13-yard line. Elliott and Gentry keep that from being a touchdown. Reggie Cobb had some problems with the handoff, but no problem splitting that Vanderbilt defense. Right here, here's the difference between making things happen defensively and not making things happen. If you got somebody at the point of attack right there, you've got a definite fumble because he almost fumbled by himself. Then he just keeps his balance, breaks through, excellent run. First down, Tennessee at the Vanderbilt 13-yard line. was run out of bounds and that's the only thing that stopped him was the sideline although he had been hit several times he goes to the six you're starting to see something here that you don't want to see and that is this no arm tackling they're just going up trying to knock him on the ground nobody wrapping up and Cobb would have broken that on in the end zone like you said Bob Second down and about four after a gain of six. Howard. And Tennessee leads for the first time this afternoon. Take a look at it right here. Howard right up the middle, and that's just brute strength. Good leg strength just right up the middle, and touchdown. And the thing that's really critical for Vanderbilt is now Tennessee has scored two touchdowns in the first 10 minutes, first five minutes and 15 seconds of the half. And the offense hadn't had their hands on the ball yet. That's exactly it. They had the kickoff that was fumbled, and the defense called on to try to stop Tennessee, but it's a no-go in 32-28. Tennessee over Vanderbilt with 9.45 left in the third period. The same thing could occur today at Neyland Stadium. Borgognoni sends it out of the end zone. So Vandy will start on offense from their own 20. Why is it that a team can look so good and suddenly has to change around like that. Well, you look I mean, at what's on the other hand, Tennessee looks so bad. Uh, and scoring drive right here, five plays, 45 yards, following the fumble on the kickoff, one minute, five seconds. And what Tennessee has done that's been most effective is keep the ball away from the Vandy offense. That's two touchdowns, and Vandy's not run an offensive play. Crawford gets three on a first down carry, and that is Vanderbilt's first play of the second half after Tennessee had the ball twice for a total of five minutes and 15 seconds and scored two touchdowns out of that. You're five and a half minutes into the third quarter. You run your first offensive play and you went in the halftime with a 10 point lead. And now you're down by four points. Second down and seven. Jones pitch fumble. At least you ran in a play that time. Barrett on the fumble on the pitch. Tennessee has it at the Vanderbilt 21. Charles Kimbrough came up with it. Well, here's an attempt at self-destruction. Pitch out right off the fingertips. And there's the ball and there's Kimbrough all over the football. So Tennessee thoroughly dismantling the Commodores at this point in the football game after being themselves rather badly dismantled through the first 21 minutes. Heath Davis gets two or three yards. If you're Vanderbilt, you've got to regroup both offensively and defensively right now. There's a lot of time in this ball game. You're only down four points, and the officials are taking a timeout. can't see exactly what for. They're talking to somebody, a young man on the sideline, who appears to be injured or something. 
shaken up. They're calling somebody over to tend to it. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you, you feel like if you're in this situation, you're behind by an insurmountable lead, but you're not by any stretch of the imagination. Just get your act back together. The same thing that Tennessee did the first half, you can do. You just go out there and say, okay, let's, let's switch this back. Remember how we played first quarter? Let's start that again. Second down and eight. Crowd which booed a Tennessee field goal a long time ago. They have turned it around. Boy, does he run hard. They're going to blow it dead. And rightfully so. Gaines and Baker. Looks like they tried to strip the ball from Cobb, but he runs it down close to first down. Mark it at the 13, so it'll bring up third and two. See the Vanderbilt sidelines, Eric Jones, and a lot of heat being put on him right now. Yeah. We have an injured Commodore, Bob Scanlon. We've seen Bob down several times this year, but never faced down like that. Right knee time, time, it looks like, doesn't it? And one slight tug, and he's making a move. I would guess that Bob Scanlon is through for the afternoon. Oh, yeah. Every pull that they've made on the knee has caused great pain. Tennessee's outscored Vandy 29 to nothing since it was 28 to 3 in favor of the Commodores. And the pain that Bob Scanlon feels in his right knee right now is probably equal to the pain that the Commodores are feeling over on the sidelines at the moment. You can see Dr. Snyder looking at it, trying to locate where the pain is. Head trainer John Norwig out there. Speaking of pain felt by people. There's one that's in great pain right now. He knows he's got to get them back on track again. This game is, is not over by a long shot, but if, if the players start feeling like it is, it's over. They're just getting scanning up there. I'm afraid Bob's through for the afternoon, and that's going to be a hole in the defense because he has he's had some kind of year this year. All the attention's gone to Chris Gaines, but Chris doesn't have the year he's had without Bob there doing what he's done. Randy Pyle comes in to replace him at the linebacker position. Darrell Holt on the sideline, Mills Fleming. They know they've got a pass in front of them because they can't do it without that offensive line. Third and about two for Tennessee. Howard close to a first down. The 11. It looks like he might be a little bit short Just from little the way they spotted short. it from up here. And they're going to go for it. See Coach Majors pointing forward. Big risk right here because if Vanderbilt can rise to the, rise to the occasion, you can just swing that momentum entirely right now. About half a yard. Need to get to just about, but not quite, the 10-yard line. And that might change the decision right there. It looked like Tennessee jumped on the left side. Since somebody in motion. It looked like as soon as the motion man got in behind the quarterback, it's almost like he brought movement with him. It is going to be motion against Tennessee. So that'll bring up fourth down to about six, and it'll bring in Phil Rich. So while Vandy had a big offsides on Tennessee's initial drive of this half, that's a big one there. Tennessee, uh, if they get the field goal, which is no certain thing, but you're trading, you're having to settle for three where you were a moment ago in a position to go for seven. Just as in the first half, they were, remember, third and one inside the five and had to settle for a first down or a field goal. 34 yard attempt from Rich. And it's good. 
So Tennessee's string of unanswered points goes to 32, but it's only three more on the total rather than seven as they are hit by a penalty that forces the field goal. 6.59 left in the third period, and the Volunteers, Norman 17, quick unanswered points. Vanderbilt has had two plays from scrimmage, and that hurts. What you've got to do offensively is just go out there, get back into sync again. The Tennessee defense has disrupted what the offense is doing. And what you've got to do is get that sync going and just drive down there. You're down seven points right now. You've got a lot of time in this ball game. The defense just went out, did their job. You just got to get back in the ball game. You don't have to win it right now. Yeah, really for Vanderbilt just to sustain drive, even if no points came out of it, might start the ball swinging in that direction. Listen to Coach Campy right here. Campilla is the linebacker coach. Spent some time with the linebackers and has had some good results with the efforts of Chris Gaines this year. Borgognoni sends another one into the end zone. All but one of his kickoffs had gone into the end zone, and that one was fumbled. And Andy wishes that one had yeah. gone in. Scanlon is over on the sidelines for the Commodores, walking. Not with any strength, but still, nonetheless, he's walking on the sideline. Well, even if Bob can't come back and play, you just hope for his sake that's not a, a knee operation time right there. Tennessee leading 35 to 28. Straight drop back. Jones under pressure. Hits Crawford incomplete. Boy, it's not often you say it's a break to have an incomplete pass, but that was almost a completion and a fumble as Crawford took quite a hit from Kimbrough. What's Kimbrough? He's going to get the pressure on. He's going to force Eric to release the ball quicker than he wants, release it to the inside where the pressure's coming from, and that allows DeLong to come over and knock the ball loose. Kimbrough getting on Jones, and it was DeLong on Crawford. Second and ten. Play action. Complete to Boo Mitchell. First down. First Commodores first down since their last touchdown. Well, I take that back. They had one first down at the end of the first half when they were killing the clock. Seems like it was since, I don't know, Noah was putting together some wood to build an arc. Right here, Eric, play action fake. And Boo's going to come out and see where the defensive backs are and just hook in right there, make the catch. The thing he does so well right across the middle. Jones. Incomplete. It was recovered by Vanderbilt. Been the receiver. Give credit where credit's due. Keith DeLong has played a tremendous ball game. Watch him right here. He's going to drop back in his zone. See Barrett drag across the middle, come up and just separate him from the ball. Just that might have been a completion, don't you think? Our stats man, Buster Olney, has DeLong with 15 tackles. Is that a lot? That's a lot. <laughs> of course, that last one wasn't a tackle, but that was quite a hit. Second down, Mitchell to Tennessee territory to the 43-yard line of Vanderbilt first down. Terry McDaniel. Listen to the crowd to right now. Listen to the crowd. That's what Vanderbilt needed more than anything else is take this crowd out of it. You can really get overwhelmed when you've got 93,000 screaming at you. And yeah, right only here, about 8,000 going for you. That's right. Boo's going to come out and once again in the middle. The thing he does so well, he's, he's fearless in there. Trailing by seven, 607 left in the half in the third quarter. Andy McCarroll, good effort, gets about six yards. Marion Hobby tackles him. McCarroll gets to the Tennessee 37 yard line. Big play right there because you reestablish the fullback. You make those linebackers think about that fullback again. You're getting yourself set up to where you can run that triple option because they're not getting that pressure on the outside men without letting the fullback go. Everett Crawford, and he gets a Vandy first down to the Tennessee 30. 
OK the first thing that Vandy wanted to do on this drive is to at least move the football and that has been accomplished now. Take the crowd out get the defense over there let them rest let the coaches go over what Tennessee's doing to them and get out there and get the offense back in sync. That's exactly what they had to do right here. First down at the Tennessee 31 for the Commodores Everett Crawford right at 100 yards again. Jones keeps tackled for a loss. Marion Hobby shut that one down. You know you're in trouble on your option when one of the linemen, defensive linemen, not the linebackers, make that tackle. That's right. What you've got to do is if you've got a situation like that, look, let's see if you could have given to the fullback. Yes. Hobby is the man that has to take the fullback right there. He does not take him. He comes out, gets Eric in the backfield. One of the few times we've seen Eric misread that triple option. Second and 12. Some pressure. Jones rolls away from it. Parker has it. And he is inside the 10, out of bounds at the 8. Andre Kramer pushed him out of bounds. Parker with a good catch and a good pass. And Vandy first and goal to Tennessee, eight-yard line. Not a bad little move here on the sidelines. Carl wants to get in the end zone. Roll right by time. Release of right over to the sidelines. Carl stops just short of the sidelines, moves back inside, and then gets blasted, but took a lot of courage to step back in. If Kramer had been coming up, he'd have gone a little further. Kramer had a pretty good angle on About him. eight yards further. First and goal at the eight. Crawford to the five-yard line. Kimbrough and Hobby. Getting back to Carl Parker, there are some pro scouts that are going to have to reevaluate what they were thinking about Carl going into the season because he's had some kind of year. He's got to be the absolute best senior possession receiver in the country. He's really what we've seen the great hands time and time again. Runs great routes. Phenomenal routes, and his speed is there too. It's not world class, but it's good enough to play in the pro. At the five, second and goal. Hemmed in, manages to get to the line of scrimmage. And brings third and goal from the five. That was almost a lateral. It was almost behind the plane of the football and the pass. Ziegler on the stop. Matter of fact, it does look like a lateral right here. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is a lateral. If he doesn't catch that, it's a fumble. And that play was never there. Tennessee read it well, even though it's the first time Bandy's running. Third and goal. Tennessee is going to call timeout. <laughs> well, one thing for certain, you know that Tennessee knows, just as everybody else does, that this game is a long way from being over. They are down to one timeout. And they take a defensive timeout here. What happened there is it's not the first time Vanderbilt's lined up in trips, which three receivers to one side or the other. But it is the first time they've taken the fullback, moved him all the way out there with the other two receivers. And so Tennessee looked at that and said, now, wait a minute. Coach, you didn't say anything about this. And he'll go over. The linebackers will go over there and say, well, we didn't say anything because we didn't know they were going to do that. <laughs> they, they threw us a curve there. So third and goal. Big play coming up here, really. Uh, Vanderbilt in a situation where if they don't get the touchdown, they can still they'll go for the I think for the three unless it's right within the one and you look at the timeouts remaining Tennessee has one Vanderbilt has all three left that can be as big a plus for you as the blocked extra point was for Tennessee that kind of got the momentum going back for Tennessee again and that's the same thing that these timeouts remaining can do that tells you wait a minute we've got them backing up here they're they're on their heels they're not real sure about what we're going to do so they're having to use all these timeouts Eric Jones 196 yards of total offense. I wouldn't mind adding five to get him over the 200 yard mark here. Third and goal from the five. They can't call another timeout. That's a penalty. Looked like Tennessee was calling a timeout. Ziegler signal for a timeout. And now they're calling an official timeout. Okay. The referee did not 
acknowledge that. Naked reverse. Pass. Well, that's the worst thing that could have happened to Vandy right there. That's what you do not do. Second interception, or an interception for Victor Pepper. Nobody there, and that's just eat the football, kick a field goal. That's time. right. You're down this close, you eat that football. Naked reverse, Eric's surprised right here. First, Boo Mitchell gets bumped out of the end zone. He's got a lot of pressure and just unloads it. As you can see, there's nobody open. Although, you see Coach Christopel is going to take him over and explain. Eric, we, we don't do that down here. The field goal really helps out. And so Vandy kept out of the end zone, a chance to pull to at least within four. And now Tennessee has the football back. Reggie Cobb gets four more yards as he is well over 100 yards on the afternoon. And you better believe Tennessee is going to be very content to just run that toss sweep, run the ice, run the give all the way down the field right here. That's what they want to do. They want to eat up some time. They don't want Vanderbilt to get their hands on the ball again. Cobb with 126 yards. Tennessee, 252 on the afternoon. So he has half of them. A little more than half of them now as he carries again, gets three or four more yards to the 28, brings up third and about two. Oh, Doug Bradley trips him up. Oh, Taking a couple of hits there, as you can see the black war marks, as we used to call it in Little League football. Two. Cobb has a first down. Gets three to the 31. Tennessee five of seven on third down conversion. Tennessee has scored in all but three possessions in the football game. They failed to get a first down in their first two possessions, then had a pass intercepted on the third. One forty left in the third quarter. Francis wide open is Cleveland. He is to the 48-yard line. Renford Reese on the tackle. A play you can only run with great speed because you've got to have that threat to push everybody back to come up there and just hook up at five yards and then let the speed get you some yardage. Gets eight or nine yards on a first down carry. Mr. William Howard on that carry. Under a minute left in the third period. Well, Tennessee scores here. Vandy's in more trouble than you'd like to think about psychologically and with the score. They may already be at that psychological point, but certainly not with the score. Play fake to Davis, going deep to Miller. Complete. Well covered by Alan Roman. Each points to the other, and neither was correct, <laughs> as there was no interference from either side there, it appeared. Take a look at it, what Francis is going to do, play action, and then just float it up and let him run under the ball. And Miller has the speed to do that, but look at Roman. He's in great position. Right there, both going for the ball, incidental contact. Just a long down right there, a long no gain. Third down and a yard. Vandy. Boy, was that a heads up play by the center, Todd Kirk. He snapped the football with Vanderbilt offsides before the Commodores could get back. Unless Tennessee drew them offsides. The cadence, obviously, is what's drawing Vanderbilt off. First down. Vanderbilt's doing the little things that they can't afford to do. They're, they're making the little mistakes. Watch right here. Obviously, the cadence. Nobody moved. They went up to the line ready to do that. It'd be That's interesting if they turn that penalty down. <laughs> it's heads up thinking by Todd Kirk. 
First down Tennessee Vanderbilt Tennessee at the Vanderbilt 38. There may have been some motion that time. I think a wide receiver looked like he took off too early. So it'll back it up to five but it won't erase the first down. 32 seconds left in the third quarter Tennessee leading 35 to 28. Balls have scored 17 points here in this quarter. And at the time they had scored the points. Vanderbilt had run two plays. But this is an opportunity for the Vanderbilt defense because Tennessee's got to open it up a little bit more. about 11 yards to the 31 yard line. He changed the play and saw an opening up the middle. Right here, sees it, heads up play, breaks back up in. A little bit of uh, extracurricular hand activity there by some of the linemen. Well, that ends the third period, or it will. There's three seconds left at this point. It is a third period that has been Tennessee it's painted orange 35 20 list and in a sea of orange of course he's in the Tennessee section because his brother Thomas plays for Tennessee and Norman you noticed when they were introducing Tennessee Carl wasn't doing any clapping though was he Carl is uh, sitting up here because he got the tickets from his brother TV but I think I know which way he's pulling right here Tennessee gets a first down. William Howard carries to the Vanderbilt 25 on the first play of the fourth quarter. Boy, the parallels between this game and the Georgia game are pretty significant. Uh, all Vanderbilt early and then all Georgia in that game from then on, and this game has been the same. Tennessee's outscored Vanderbilt 32 to nothing. Look at Since the first quarter, and then look at second and third for Tennessee. Howard is hit in the backfield by Renford Reese, and he still gets a couple of yards. And I'll take that like back. They're going to mark it back at the 26. So no gain on the play, and a good play by Renford Reese, who Pile breaks through from the outside. And Reese comes in from the outside, knocks him down. But that says something for Cobb right there, that he was strong enough to get back to the line of scrimmage because he really got waylaid. Second and ten. Francis changing up again. Not a whole lot with Joe Gentry making the tackle. Freshman Reggie Cobb. A force to be reckoned with for three more years. Third down and seven for Tennessee. They are five of seven in third down conversion. Again, Francis changes it up. Straight drop back incomplete. Defended by on the far side intended for Alvin Harper. Fourth down. Tennessee will bring on the field goal unit. Be about a 40 yard try here. Lee England will put the foot the tee down. Well we know Rich right has the, the leg for this. Talking about Gallatin, that's where England is from. That's not going to quite do it, is it? Rich topped the football, and so Vanderbilt holds Tennessee out of points and keeps it a seven-point football game. 13-12 left to play in this game. It's Tennessee 35, Vanderbilt 28. Hand off to Everett Crawford. Nothing open, and Everett cuts back in and makes yardage out of what looked to be a loss on the play, and that's where that good quickness and that ability to read and react in a hurry can come into play. 
and Everett's a senior. He knows he's got to get something going. He's got to lead the offense through, get them going, get them clicking again. So he tried a little something there. I guess him 106 yards on the day. 35-28 Tennessee. 12:40 to play in the football game. No backs behind Jones. Nobody in motion. Pass to McCarroll. First down. Well, that's that play that they called Tennessee called timeout on. With McCarroll lined up out on the side with three receivers, and he's the man that gets the pass. It's really something when you got a fullback that can do the things that Andy can do. I mean, you don't look for anybody as big as Andy to come out here, split out wide, make the reception. And that's exactly what he does. First down Vanderbilt there at the 38, their own 38 yard line. Batted down. Incomplete second down coming up. Looked like Mitchell was the intended receiver, but the ball was about 20 yards short. Batted down by David Johnson. Do had come out and hooked up. You'll take a look at it. Eric's back. Looks right. And Johnson just gets his big mitts up and knocks it to the ground. Second and ten. Whitehead tackled him, the middle guard. Third and nine. Well, the mesh just wasn't there that time. Eric was as big a hindrance to Andy McCarroll as the Tennessee defense. He reached, reached out and couldn't decide, or they wouldn't let go of the ball, and that really slowed him down. Jones, the roll out. Tipped away. Intended for Parker, Victor Peppers got his hands on the football. Fourth down and a punt coming up from Johnny Clark. Right here, Clark's roll right, by time, use your fullback. And you'll see Peppers break right in front, and you'll see the ball jump over, and you'll see Johnny Majors make a catch right here. He didn't have to go down and get it like Watson did last week, though. Clark's second punt of the football game. Thomas Woods back to eight for Tennessee. Woods calls for a fair catch out at the 26. And you think that's Kramer who was back deep. 35 yard punt, no return. And Tennessee's football at the 26 with 11 minutes and 25 seconds left in the football game. What Tennessee wants to do at this point is go out here, sustain a drive, and get at least three points out of it. Because if they can take five minutes, run down, get three points, then you've got about six and a half minutes to go if you're Vandy, and you've got to make up ten points. Keith Davis gets free. Boy, what an effort by Davis. Got hit actually in the backfield and gets two yards. Hit at the line of scrimmage, and he still spins forward to the 28th. Watch the penetration from the Vanderbilt defense, but watch the effort from Davis. Break that one, keep your legs moving, keep the legs moving, and then here comes Gaines across. It's time to get down when you see the 34 coming through. Second and eight. again is running with a great deal of strength. I think that's what's impressive. He's always been a good finesse runner. Tell you what else is impressive. Could you hear the pads popping that time? He gets about four. It's third down and four. Davis has 57 yards on eight carries and tack those on with what you've seen from Cobb and you've got quite a tandem back there. Total. That'll get him up to about 90. 
93, actually. Watch the key. Well, you can't see right here, but they've got the linebackers rocking back on their heels looking for a pass. And when you see that happen, you know they're about to break one. Look at the balance and the speed. Excellent run by Davis. Joe Gentry does some bulldogging and gets him down. Tennessee, a first down to Andy, 33-yard line. Great block there by Howard on Gaines. Davis getting a lot of work. Hit by his own man in the backfield. It looks like Keith Simons. And that's as good a hit as there's been on the running back for either team all day. Simons just gets spun around right here, and he's looking for somebody to hit it. Just found the wrong guy. <laughs> he did. He tackled his own man. I'm sure what he he felt somebody outside and turned to block. Well, he was trying to go back and get Winston, but why, I don't know. Because he had taken DeMond a little bit out of the play. Davis was cutting back inside. Loss. Cleveland, good tackle by Baker. Boy, Cleveland gets away, you're in trouble. And Andy did a good job of holding him up and making initial contact in the open field. That clock running down, and it's not running down in favor of Vanderbilt. Tennessee, 32 unanswered points. With Tennessee on the march like this, really eating up that clock. They are third and seven at the Vandy 30. gets it away incomplete the blitz forced him to rush the throw pretty good coverage on Cleveland anyway by Baker Pyle and or make Baker coming in pretty good coverage out there Pyle also forced the throw now Rich will try a 47 yarder high snap last time Vandy came with a blitz that time and got just enough pressure on Francis even though they didn't get to him to make him backpedal throw off his heels and that caused him to underthrow. 47 yard attempt from Phil Rich. Good. Well, that makes the chore for Vanderbilt even tougher now as they trail by 10, and Tennessee continues to tack up the points without Vanderbilt answering. 8 12 left to play, and it's the Volunteers 38, Tennessee 28. lead by 10 and only 8 minutes and 12 seconds left to play. And you talk about Tennessee running up the unanswered points because it's it's staggering. 35 to nothing. That's their run. They trailed at one time 28 to 3 and they came out of a shell and it looked like maybe the Commodores were guilty of going into one. And they've kept the Vanderbilt offense on the sideline for the most part. They've kept the defense on the field just exactly what Tennessee wanted and Vandy did not. Johnson fields the football at the one and a half. Doesn't get very far. He's out to the 18. So on the kickoff from Borgognoni in this game, Vanderbilt has returned one past the 20. They've had only two. That one was fumbled. This one goes to the 18. He's kicked all the others into the end zone. Give Mark credit right there because he did a tremendous job to get it out as far as yeah. he did because the blocking had just completely broken down. He had to evade one man immediately and then sweep through to get out to the 18. Well, it's loaded up and fire at time for the Commodore. 8.06. Trailing by 10. They're at their own 18 yard line. Jones avoids some people, gets it to McCarroll, a short gain of three. Eric did a good job of avoiding being sacked really for a seven job. yard loss. Missed assignment right here. Somebody's going to come through free. And Eric just heads up play, turns nothing or a loss into something. Not much, but that beats a five-yard loss. Second and seven. Pitch to Rodney Barrett. And Barrett gets a first down to the 31. The three points that Vandy missed out on, looking at that 
third down pass that was intercepted. Those are very important points right now. I tell you, Vanderbilt's going out there running the old offense, and Watson Brown knows a whole lot more football than I ever dreamed of knowing, but that's exactly what he needs to do. You've run it all year long. You don't panic. You just go down here and go for the score. Play action, Jones to Mitchell to the 45-yard line. First down, Vandy. Who Mitchell on a reception again? Well, we've said it before, but who do you go to if you got to go in a crowd? Back it up and go to Boo. He'll stand in there and take a lick all day long. Commodores out to their 45. 6.45 left in the football game. 38-28 in favor of Tennessee. Give to Crawford. Nice slip of one tackler and gets to the 50 in a five-yard game. Everett slipped a tackle at about the 47. Keith DeLong, 16 tackles. Tremendous day for DeLong. He is a junior, so the SEC will look at him again next year. There's the clock. Second down and five. They didn't get it off. That's the first time this year that Vanderbilt has been called for a delay of game. You can see that one coming. And you just gave up what you got on your first down play. So now it'll be second down and 10, and you're back into half to throw. You can see Eric didn't get the play early at all, but still it took so long to relay it out to the receivers and back over to your tight end. and. Got caught for the delay. Second and 10 now, back at the 45. Parker overthrown. And he was open Ooh. on the side. I mean, there was nobody close to Carl Parker. Unfortunately, the football was a little bit high and thrown. Got the pressure on Eric and made him release the ball a little bit quick. He didn't have a chance to realize that Carl was out there in the open. You'll see Eric drop back. And he can feel a little heat coming in here. Knows he's got to get rid of it. And just overthrows it. And you see no Tennessee defenders in that screen there either. Coach Brown just motioned to Eric to calm down, just to relax. Vanderbilt confused on offense and they'll take a timeout. It's obvious that there's some rattling going down there. We have 538 left to play in this football game. Tennessee leads by 10. They were caught on a delay of game the first time this year that they have been nailed for delay of game. And then forced to go with a timeout. Coach Campy over there rallying the troops saying, hey guys, the offense will get out there and do it. We've got to go back in there one more time, shut them down, get the ball back. Third and 10. On the other hand, if you are confused, you do have to call a timeout in that situation. It's not the time to just take your chances. Crawford complete and out of bounds at the 50, but that'll only be halfway to where the Commodores needed to go for a first down. Brings up fourth and five. Commodores have to go for it here, don't they? They have to because they're down two scores. That ball was almost intercepted right there, by the way. Everett made the catch and was getting jostled around and got out of bounds. Eric has got to get out there. He's got to calm down. I mean, this is a huge, huge play. How'd you like to be out here in front of 93,000 fans? You played about one year's worth of college football, one and a quarter at most, and you got to run a fourth and five. Jones forced out of the pocket and sacked for a loss of two. Richard Cooper, the man that sacked him. Take a look at it. Jones back. All the receivers off to the left covered. 
They're in trips formation. Cooper just breaks away as Jones breaks out of the pocket and drags him down. Mark Vanek is an injured Tennessee player down, and he is being looked at by one of their trainers and doctors. It's like a shoulder, shoulder maybe problem separation. Well, things don't look good, do they, if you're looking at it from the black and gold perspective. 522 to play, trailing by 10. Tennessee has the football at the Vanderbilt 47 and barring a turnover real soon. Let's see what, if we can see how Havana gets hurt. Reaches out, goes down. He, he landed on his elbow, pinned it against the turf, and his body just kept going. I'm somewhat of an expert at that because that's exactly what happened when I dislocated mine. Looks like he didn't have any movement in there, so it could very well be separated or dislocated. It's a big, big blow to the defense of Tennessee because he's been a mainstay in there for some time now. Vanek, one of 20 volunteer seniors. Time remaining in this football game. 38-28 in favor of Tennessee. They take over on downs at the Vandy 47-yard line. Howard and Cobb are the back. Blitz. One ball in the backfield. It's Vanderbilt's football. Gaines caused it, and Reese picked it up. There's that turnover. Boy, did they time that blitz absolutely perfectly. That's what Coach Cappy was telling me. We need to get out here, blitz, get a fumble. Boom. No chance right there. Howard can't get to Gaines. And Francis has no chance. He doesn't even see him. And right there on the spot. So it's 5.18, four seconds going off the clock. Vandy. It's a hard way to get the back. first down right there. That's the hard way. Andy McCarroll runs it in. Well, I'll tell you what, right now, you know, you, you look back at things. There's a million things you can look at in a game like this, but a missed field goal opportunity as a result of the interception and that long 47-yard field goal by Rich are really big plays. You take, well, you if you get 47-yard field goal, <laughs> Vandy's driving to tie the game, and you know they're going to go for two to go ahead. Or if you look at that, knock it off, add three to Vandy's score, and then you're really looking at a touchdown that would put you ahead. It's not the way it's going to be. There's a mix-up that time, and Crawford was hit in the backfield by Whitehead. Mix-up there. Andy obviously should have come to Eric Jones is right. The old misdirection they've run. It's been all or nothing, as we said all year. That time, less than nothing. They're down five. Keeps a football right at first He's down right yardage. He is at the 34, and that's where the first down marker is. Marion Hobby brings him down. And we're below four minutes, and they're going to have to measure this. For Scanlon, knee iced up. At least he was walking on it. When you see that shoe off and the knee wrapped like that, well, we could tell when he was going out that it was likely all for him for the day, and that confirms that. We're not even going to measure. You talk about a play right here. What do you think Tennessee's looking for? 50 to play. 38-28 Tennessee. Fourth and less than one. That has worked all day for Vandy. When they've needed a yard or two, they've gone on the sneak with Jones. You feel like if you had five plays to get the first down, Vandy could have run that all the way down the field all day long. Harry gets the first down to the 33. Vanderbilt going back into the huddle. Coach Brown's making a conscious effort right here to calm his team down by letting him huddle up. Play action pass coming up. Jones has Parker wide open. Great move by Parker. He went to the inside and cut out. Post corner, and I mean he runs it as well as anybody that plays this game. 
38 34 does that score bring back memories right here take a look at this Carl's going to come out and watch the move inside turns the defense back all the way around <laughs> defensive backs breaking on the post Carl's right there here just get it to me 33 yards a dozen touchdown receptions for Parker his second of the day Vandy will go for two no big surprise there no you go for two then a field goal can put you ahead if you get the ball back if not then you got to get a touchdown anyway Vandy would not settle for a tie no. under any circumstances Vandy's not playing this game for a tie 324 left Mitchell two oh. 38-36 to score. Boo didn't have a chance to make sure his feet were in. He just had to concentrate on that ball. And let's take a look at it. Beautiful pass by Eric. And you go into the side that you don't expect Vanderbilt to go. Make the catch. There. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, he had that other foot down, though. <laughs> I don't know. But what Vanderbilt did right there is they've done that so many times over to Carl Parker, the possession receiver, and they said, well, let's really give him a twist here. Everybody's lined up looking for it to go to Carl and threw it over to Boone. Oh, look at the guys coming out for Vanderbilt. Roman, Newman, Clark, Cunningham, Turner, Gentry, Elliott. Look at the guys You think they're going to try Tennessee. an onside kick? You talk about your all-state team. They've got the good hands people in there. Defensive backs and receivers and running backs. That's all that's on the field anywhere except for one kicker. Vanderbilt refusing to give in and concede defeat here. They have come back. Trail by two points, 324 to play. Vandy with two timeouts left. Tennessee recovers the kick. It'll be up to the defense. They're lining up to kick it to the right side. Now there's, a, there's flag. a flag. I don't think a Vandy player touched it before it crossed 10 yards. No. I think Tennessee recovered it anyway. If it's against, well, let's just see what it is. It's Tennessee's football. Let's see if we can get some kind of indication on what the flag is because. They may have thrown an inadvertent flag thinking there was and now yeah, exactly they're waving it off. That's a. Look at this two-point conversion again. Boo backpedaling, turns. Yow. I tell you. <laughs> Looked like he came down on the line, didn't it? Uh, yeah, is it tennis? And baseball on the line is a fair ball. Not so in this sport, however. Gets a couple of yards. I don't, know how many times, I don't know how many times Cobb's fumbled the ball this year, but it's very few because a freshman does not play as much as he has and fumble. <laughs> Vanderbilt still has two timeouts. So if the defense can get up here and really play. 250 and counting. 38-36 in favor of Tennessee. Blitz picked up this time. Cobb near side and a good game. It'll make third and short. Two things right there. One, Francis milked that clock down to about two seconds. And secondly, look at the blocking right here. They're just going to get down the line, seal off, and Cobb's just going to run up there as he does so well and run in hard and pick up, leave himself about three yards short, and Vanderbilt's called a timeout. So the Commodores and Tennessee both with one timeout remaining. Two minutes, 28 seconds left to play. We will take a break. Only two points separate these two teams. If Tennessee gets a first down, they will be able to just sit on the football. Could be the play of the game right here. This is a game you're going to look back and you could say any of about 50 I can think of have had such a tremendous impact going one way or the other as to how the outcome might have swung. Well, see you later, folks. Uh, 
Well, it's worked for Vandy, and this time it works against him. It's the third time Vandy's been drawn off sides. First down, and that's it. Unless Tennessee fumbles the football. And if you're Tennessee now, I wouldn't try anything fancy. We'll see a lot of toss sweeps and just straight gives. Right there, Chris, he's just got to time it up and use gut instinct on when to go. And there's no way to hold back right there because you've blown the whole defense if you don't just go ahead and go with it. So first down, Tennessee on the penalty. Stay in bounds. Randy Pyle tackles it. A lot of savvy for a freshman because a lot of backs would have been just going for all the yards they could get. And Cobb saw, hey, I got to get down right here. Toss sweep. Watch Francis. Francis peels back and blocks somebody from the backside. And Cobb just stops running. He says, I, I just got to stay in bounds. He got five yards, second and five. Charles Wilson, close to a first down. Third and a foot. And that clock keeps winding down. And Tennessee now, though, is in field goal range. Well, if you're Vandy, you almost wish they'd just go ahead and kick the thing. Tennessee would be just as content to run the football out and not have to try that. Give the Tennessee line a lot of credit right here because they've done a tremendous job on what they had to do. They had to keep the ball on the ground. Vandy knows that. Tennessee knows that. Everybody in the stadium knows that. Third and less than a yard. First down. Two seconds left to play, and so Vandy has one timeout left. Tennessee might have to run three plays maximum, I would think. Vanderbilt will use a timeout at some point. Francis, with all his experience being a junior, but a lot of time under his belt, going to get up here. He's going to milk that clock just as much as he can and make sure he doesn't fumble. He's just going to drop to a knee. See, they have, looks like Cleveland, they're one of their fastest players. Or is it Miller? Is Miller back in a safety position on offense just in case something and happens? If we fumble, you take off and stop him from scoring. Of course, Vanderbilt's only chance would be to recover a fumble in midair, even in that situation. Vandy uses their last time out. It has been quite a football game. And as it stands now, unless Tennessee should get a late score or lose the football game, it is going to be a two-point football game. Quite a ball game. I know I'm drained. From this you have to be after a game like this. Uh, particularly... Vanderbilt, because it was so elating, you, you, you had so much elation when the score got to be 28 to 3. And unfortunately, while the fans are probably saying, hey, I don't believe this, some of that might have gone down on the field because it just turned around completely from that point on. But you knew, Vanderbilt knew that Tennessee's too good a team to have a 28 to 3 lead on and them just to fold up. I mean, that's a given. So they knew they had to keep the pressure on and keep it on and keep it on. And somewhere along the line, Tennessee just started clicking. And Vandy just couldn't do anything to stop them there while they were hot. It was a combination of two things, the Tennessee offense and the Tennessee defense. Both got going at the same time. And particularly in the third quarter, what was essential to Tennessee was keeping the Vandy offense off the field, which they did a marvelous job of. And think about the interception in the end zone for Vanderbilt. Francis goes down. They will spot the football. Now let's see. That'll do it. They'll spot it with less time on the clock than on the play clock. And so that will be, that was there, the last play of the football game. It comes down to... 38-36 Tennessee victory over Vanderbilt. Long jog out there for Watson Brown. 
Shake hands with Doug Matthews there. And uh, shake with Johnny Major. For Vanderbilt, this is going to go down as one that almost was. Nineteen eighty one revisited. Of nineteen eighty seven, Tennessee, of course, going on.